Good morning. Welcome to our online worship service here at Central Christian Church. The only announcement we have is on September 12th, the Ministry Council will be having a meeting and they're updating as to when we'll be back in person and if we will have a bazaar. And now for our call to worship. Our God is a God of blessing. Our God is a God of love and justice. Our God is a God of wisdom and truth. Living and loving in that spirit, we will not be moved. I want you to take a moment and think of a prayer request that you have. Maybe it's for yourself or your family, a friend, a church member, or it's as big as the entire world right now. I know that we all have so many requests that we need and want to lift up to God. So take a moment and do that in whatever way you want to. If it's sitting in silence with your eyes closed and just letting God know your heart or speaking that prayer aloud, whether it's in a whisper or screaming it out loud, however you're praying it, God hears you, God knows. So take a minute, take a breath and do that. You can pause this video for however long you want to. Do that prayer and then come back and join me in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning is Psalm chapter 15. Let us listen to the word of God together. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? The one whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, 
who does no wrong to a neighbor and casts no slur on others, who despises a vile person, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind, who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A couple of weeks ago, I preached a sermon and it was about what we let into our minds and our hearts. Is it wisdom, encouragement, or judgment, or fear, and so on. And I asked a series of questions. Who do you let in? Who do you let into your home? Well, today I'm going to turn the tables. Instead of asking about who you let into your home, or how you prepare for guests, my question is how do you prepare to be a guest? Or what type of guest are you? Are you the perky house guest? The one who's excited about everything, who wants to bake cookies, watch movies, and is just always happy and ready to do anything and help with everything? Are you the one who has the coffee ready before anyone else is up? That kind of house guest. Or... Are you the complaining house guest? You know, the one who always finds something wrong with the house they're staying in. The sheets aren't a high enough thread count. The food isn't cooked quite right. Or the shower doesn't have the same water pressure as yours does at home. You know, nothing is quite good enough as it is at your home. Yeah, sometimes we're that house guest too. Or maybe you're the one who practically moves in, even if it's only a three-day trip. You don't make the bed, don't offer to help with the dishes, you know, plop down on the couch like it's home and do whatever you want. Is that you? Or are you the go-with-the-flow house guest? The one who will help out with anything, isn't bothered by much, and is happy going on an adventure or just staying around and relaxing. Is that you? At some point, whether we want to admit it or not, we've probably been all of these house guests at some point in our lives, depending on our mood, the situation we're in, and where we are in life. And we all know that each one of us has our own quirks and our routines that make life easy for us or things go smoothly. And those quirks and routines usually work out best when we're at home rather than someone else's home. And I guess in the grand scheme of things, I'm not sure that it matters what type of house guest you are, except maybe to whoever you're staying with. However, what if I told you that you're going to be a house guest, a housed guest in God's house? Would that change the type of guest you are? Would you go from the complaining type to the go with the flow house guest? Or maybe even the perky one who's excited about everything. Today's scripture lists the requirements it takes to be in the Lord's house. Or the Lord's tent, as the psalm says. It says to be in the Lord's house, one has to have a blameless walk. One has to do what is righteous. One has A person has to be honest. A person has to be one who doesn't slander others. Who does not speak hateful words about other people or do something hurtful to a neighbor. 
And no, that doesn't just mean your literal neighbor who lives next to you. That means anyone around you. To be invited into the Lord's house, a person needs to honor those who fear the Lord. To keep an oath even when it hurts and not change their mind about it. To lend money to the poor without interest. And not accept a bribe against the innocent. These guests, the people who do these things, they will never be shaken. Well, I don't know about you, but I think I need to shape up as a guest if I want to be in the Lord's house. This psalm, though, it's more than a list of things that are required for to be in relationship with God or to be invited into the Lord's home. It's more than that. This psalm is an invitation to live our lives in a new way, to make our world better, to affirm people instead of tearing them down, to lead wholesome lives. Think about what we hear every day in our society. What we hear every day is pretty much the opposite of what this passage says. We're constantly faced with negativity, people tearing each other apart, and violence all around. Yet, what if we lived our lives like we're preparing to go to God's house at any moment? What if we lived our lives like God was every person we encounter on a daily basis? If we thought God was driving next to us on the road, would we still honk the horn and yell? Or would we maybe have a little more patience? If we thought God was the one at the drive through window handing us our coffee or our food, would we say thank you and be a little more kind? My friends, I don't think the psalmist is just writing here about steps to get into heaven or to God's house or to be with God. That's the literal interpretation. And hey, that's great. I think we should follow those steps to be in God's house, to be in heaven. Yes. But I think there's so much more to this psalm than that. I think that's surface level. If we dig deeper, this psalm, like our proverb scripture from a couple weeks ago, is about wisdom. The wisdom to know how to live and navigate this crazy world that we live in. This psalm ends with, whoever does these things will never be shaken. Will never be shaken. This statement is a bit hard to read. Because lately, with everything going on in the world, the horrors in Afghanistan, COVID numbers rising, and everything in between, I felt pretty shaken up, completely shaken up. But I also know that I haven't been following every step of this psalm. I mean, maybe a little, but I've also let myself get into the traps of social media and outlets that allow people to bash and slur each other and aren't always positive places. I've been impatient. I've had moments of doubt. And I've been shaken up. Have you? I've been shaken up, yet I also know that I haven't been giving everything to God. I've been trying to live into the love and grace of God But have I? Have I really been trying? Have I been following what this psalm says? Mm, I think I've just been getting by. Feeding into all the negativity around us. 
and hoping for better days without praying for them or following the urgings of the Holy Spirit. So, no wonder I've been a mess. Yet in this moment, I'm choosing to start fresh, to have a new attitude, to do my best to be wise and follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You know, that gut instinct you have from within, that instinct is holy. That's the Holy Spirit guiding us. So will you join me on this journey of starting fresh? The book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 22 and 23 say, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. No matter how much we've been shaken up, how much we've messed up, doubted, or have acted in hurtful ways, or even let negativity into our thoughts and hearts, God is there saying, it's okay. We can start fresh. I'm not holding anything against you. So let's start fresh today. Let's prepare to be the best guests that we can be in the Lord's house. The guests who are hopeful and helpful, never losing faith. Then, and only then, can we say and know in our hearts and souls that we will never be shaken. Amen. shall come again. But 
Let's pray. Lord God, we approach this table with gratitude and humility. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross to save us from sin. As we take these elements, the bread reminds us of his body broken for us, the wine representing his blood spilled for us to wash away our sin. I pray that we also could be the light of the world and share in his love and forgiveness that he has so graciously shown for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. still holding office hours and although we're not meeting in person the church still has to run and so if you can you're welcome to bring in your offerings you can mail them to the church you can call and say hey I need somebody to come pick up my offering and bring it to the church and we can make that happen because your offerings are what makes ministry happen and even though it's different right now, it's still happening, and we're so grateful for all that you do. All right, let's close this worship service with a prayer. God, for this day, we give you thanks. For the people watching this service, we just ask you to bless them and let them know how loved they are. And God, go with us through this new week and help us to be the people that you call us to be, people of grace and mercy. In Jesus' name, 